three, environmental earth art. The Data Movement (anti art) began after the First World War, initiating the stage of the artist to reintegrate life into art by rejecting the academic approach to art. For example, artist Marcel Duchamp created data exhibits where he placed his snow shovel on a museum or gallery wall with the caption, "In advance of the broken back." This is similar to concept art, in that it is dealing with livingness, playing with traditional mind through decontexted placement of everyday environmental objects. The other side of dataism is environmental modification or environmental art. In some ways, this approach builds on the tradition of garden art or garden sculptures, with roots in Chinese, European, and Indian landscape art. For example, gardens built for kings or monarchs were laid in such a way to engage the imagination by placement of different sculptures and decorations, as well as vast geometric or enhanced natural designs. In the 1960s and 1970s, emerged environmental or earth art, where artists did things like shovel mounds of earth into a gallery or other public places. In the 1960s, outdoor sculpture, which had always been a traditional art form, evolved into large industrial-scale abstractions set in courtyards of imposing glass-encased skyscrapers. One of the popular slogans among the artists in the 1970s was "Art is anything you can get away with." In the early 1970s, artist and helium millionaire Stanley Marsh III created a new form of environmental earth art on his property in Texas. Marsh and friends created Cadillac Ranch by burying ten fishtail Cadillacs halfway into the ground, with the back half sticking out. Each of the cars faced west, reportedly at the same angle as the Cheops pyramids in Egypt. This created a dramatic effect on the flat Texas landscape. Another example of an environmental artist is Krzysztof Vladimirov Javachev, a Bulgarian artist noted for wrapping plastic over nature, including a big cliff on the English Channel. In the early 1970s, Krzysztof created the big fence projected in San Francisco. Where he and fellow artists constructed a fence that ran for miles in Marin and Sonoma counties, many of his projects were too monumental to carry out, so he displayed drawings of environmental art proposals. One of these proposals was to cover the entire Dover coast of England in plastic. It appeared that Christo intended to break out of any conceptual definition of art, i.e., sculpture and painting. Around this time, also emerged billboard art. Where people would buy large billboard space, usually overlooking freeways or in cities, and put up strange slogans or images. One notable example of this type of art is John Lennon and Yoko Ono, who in 1969 bought space for a billboard in Times Square with the message "War is over if you want it." The 1970s also saw the emergence of graffiti art. Where artists use spray paint as a medium to cover large surfaces in the urban environment. Most graffiti artists remain anonymous and work primarily in urban areas, particularly in subway trains and buildings. Both billboard and graffiti art express a desire to modify the environment by creating a perceptual shock. With graffiti art, we are dealing often with guerrilla artists who like to leave their mark in public places. Using spray paint to create outrageous forms of expression, these paintings are often skillful and imaginative, brightening up otherwise dull sections of the urban jungle. Though building owners might think different, a common style pervades graffiti art, whether it is seen in Brazil, San Francisco, or London. As an art form, graffiti art provides an outlet for the anonymous individual to release a sense of oppression. Of being an exploited consumer in an urban setting, the revolt against the oppressive anonymity of global industrial civilization strikes to the root of the purpose of being human. On the one hand, the artist uses him or herself as the medium of art and the environment as the context. Artists often realize that they are performing a type of shamanic function, such as ascribed to Aboriginal societies. 
environmental art originated in archaic art. The Glastonbury zodiac, for instance, as a part of the English landscape design, is constructed at different points to emphasize the actual zodiac mapped out on the earth. Stonehenge and the figures of the Nazca Plains in Peru are good examples of sacred earth art, as are all types of labyrinths and even pyramids, stupas, and the Great Wall of China. Crop circles are an example of an inexplicable interdimensional earth art. Japanese American artist Isamu Noguchi created a sculptural model using tetrahedrons for a monumental earth sculpture entitled Face to be Seen from Mars. These are examples of artists going back to the earth to create forms or images engraved in the earth as if for an extraterrestrial audience. These two extremes or poles, urban graffiti and monumental earthworks, are the results of the impulse to reintegrate the livingness of the imaginal realm into the natural environment as a synthesized whole. In some ways, this is a response to a larger cosmic movement of art, seeking to rephrase itself in terms of a higher cosmic perception. In this sense, the International Earth Day, observed March 21st equinox, is also an example of a unifying or synthesizing art form celebrating the planet's wholeness while offering education that highlights alternative technologies. 4. Technomedia Generated Art Technomedia art began with photography and evolved into radio, films and television, advancing into the music industry with pop music and pop art. The evolution of pop music as an art form ultimately evolved into rock and roll. This category includes media-generated art forms such as large concerts and festivals like Woodstock. These types of events combine music with media light shows and special effects, such as fire and dry ice, to create a multi-sensory, multimedia effect. Then there is television and use of video as performance or concept art, leading into the development of the personal computer, internet and cell phone. This is followed by every other technological gadget, digital cameras, iPods, DVDs, etc. In this late stage where we now find ourselves, we have reached the maximum potential of individualism in art. This stage is exemplified in social networking websites where people project themselves into a virtual reality space that includes their likes, dislikes, photos of themselves and pictures of their friends, music they like, blogs, and so on. This is the ultimate state of the cosmic urge to break out of old forms and allow the human maximum potential for individuality and expression. As the population increases, more and more people compete for attention. It seems people need more attention than ever. The urge for a tribal network has its roots in Aboriginal societies. These Aboriginal societies had a tribal unit where everyone in the tribe was integral as a living medium of consciousness and as their own work of art operating within a collective art hall, sometimes known as a social clan or tribal unit. There were very few people to compete with in the aboriginal tribal units, and most tribes were a good distance from each other, so there was maximum space and time to evolve a high level of self as a medium of pure artistic, archetypal mythic expression, the actual instrument of cosmic myth as self. However, at this time, there are close to 7 billion people on the planet, many of whom live in the same crowded open space. Ironically, an electronic global village is the only self-expressive outlet. This is an unprecedented situation for the human race. The speed of life is happening so fast that there is no way to assess the impact of this speed on the psyche. In turn, the psyche responds more and more rapidly to outer stimuli, causing many unconscious behaviors to surface. Yet even among traditional indigenous societies, the techno-media provide a creative outlet for communicating new elevated expressions of collective tribal art. For example, 
Some indigenous groups utilize the internet to emphasize their perception of unity to cultivate a new global sensibility, using the whole range of tribal music, modern sounds, and images to raise awareness about our world and the need for universal brotherhood.